all right hi everyone welcome back to another video so today guys i'm going to show you a postural routine uh, posture is something very very important and actually now that i'm in my last year of physical therapy i'm uh, writing an elaborate uh, by doing some research about how sitting is gonna uh, is affecting the posture and uh, how you can counter the effects of sitting for a very long time every single day by doing some very easy exercises all right so i'm going to show you now these exercises we're going to cover the main areas that are going to be affected when we spend a lot of time sitting so the neck area so the cervical spine then we're going to talk about the thoracic spine scapulas shoulders we're going to talk about lumbar spine and then finally hips and glutes and uh, hip flexors now all these areas sooner or later are gonna be affected by your sitting posture. So every time you sit, you're gonna have your glutes in an extended position, you're gonna have your hamstrings in a contracted, in a shortened position, you're gonna have your hip flexors in a shortened position. Most of the times, if you don't have any lumbar support, you're gonna have your lumbar spine also rounding like this. I don't know if you can see it. So rounding, lumbar spine, uh so flex you're gonna have kyphosis hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine so too much rounding and therefore your scapulas your shoulders are all towards the front and finally for the neck we we're gonna have this forward head posture so with when your head up here so you lose the ability to keep your head straight up here and uh, you do you just do this so you just move the last the first two or three vertebrae, you use them to move your head up so you can look forward. So we have this posture right here, like this. Right? I'm exaggerating the posture, but that's that's pretty much what uh, is about. And sitting, every, a lot of times when we sit, we have this posture, but we don't even realize it because we are, we, maybe we have uh, something behind, right? So we're relaxing the something, we, are, we have our hands on the computer, so we don't realize that we're rounding our shoulders, our head is forward and we spend a lot of time like this on the computer mostly or reading writing so i'm going to show you a postural routine that you guys can do it's very simple uh it's going to have some exercises with the wall some some weights any weights even like water bottles uh, and some are going to be with the elastic band so if you if you don't have any i really suggest you to to go get one they're very very cheap and you can use them for a ton of different things so let's start first of all uh the neck so you, we're gonna do here two exercises for this version first of all is you're gonna place yourself against the wall it's very important here that your feet are very close towards the wall almost touching it all right uh and then you're gonna keep your pelvis touching the wall right you're gonna keep your scapulas touching the wall and then from here you want to just move your head towards the wall so you don't want to do this so you don't want to bring your chin up but keeping your chin straight you're going to just move your head to your head towards the back like this all right now as you if you can't achieve this or if you need to really concentrate just to touch the wall just do this exercise if you can do it quite easily or you have already trained a little bit so you you, you are able to bring your head straight like this what you can do now is you wanna, as you breathe out, you wanna bring your chin down, but without letting your head lose touch of the wall. All right, so like this. So you're in this position here. You wanna bring your chin as low as possible towards your chest without though letting the wall go. All right, so that's the tricky part. So I'm gonna show you it right here. So. Keep it five seconds and then relax. And all right, you're gonna do it 10 to 15 times, all right? So 10 to 15 reps of this. And remember always to hold the for five seconds. You should really feel the muscles right here working so you should feel the muscles the occipitalis muscles so the muscles up here working a little bit all right 
but mostly the muscles here, the deep muscles, the deep flexors of the neck. And these muscles are the muscles that tend to be very weak when we have this forward posture, right? So that's, that's why we're strengthening them. And that's it, right? So these two exercises are the best for the neck, the cervical area. The more you work on this, the more you're gonna be able to, as you are relaxed, your head is gonna already have a better posture because your body is gonna get used to having the head correctly placed. Uh, you're gonna be strengthening these muscles. You're gonna get away a lot of tension from the back muscles, from the trapezius especially. And, uh, and yeah, so we're gonna, we're, you're gonna be better. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna be able to also feel like you're able to, to have a better posture already. And so, uh, yeah, everything's gonna be better. Now, second portion of the body, the thoracic part, thoracic extension, something that we need to work on because all this rounding, all this having the hyperkyphosis is gonna actually make you lose the ability to actually extend your thoracic spine. Now, a lot of people, they think that they're extending the thoracic spine, but what they're doing is they're actually using the low back. So look here at my shoulders. If I'm doing this, I'm not actually doing any thoracic extension. This is just lumbar extension. So see here? Here, I'm just doing all the work with my lumbar spine, but the thoracic, the thoracic vertebrae are in the same spot. Here or here, they're, they're equal. So we need to actually, we need to be able to open up the chest. The more you can open up the chest and you can actually uh, like bring your hands up and towards the back, that means that you have more thoracic extension. So there is a very, very easy exercise that you can do. I'm gonna show you one here with the wall, so you don't need anything. Just place your hand on top of the wall like this. All right, place your feet about like 15 centimeters from the wall. And then from here, what you're gonna do is you wanna try to sit back as you wanna like do a squat, all right? As you wanna sit back on something but keeping your hand, your arms up. And because you have the wall, you can't actually compensate by bringing your whole body forward because there is a wall. So this is gonna actually work a lot on the thoracic extension because by working on the arms, it's gonna work on the scapulas. And by working on the scapulas, you can actually work on the spine. So here, all right, arms as straight as possible. And then just try to sit back and not, it don't, fall backwards, all right? So like this, go down, go as low as you can. The better thoracic extension you have, the lower you can go without losing the posture. So like this, like this, all right? And then you can come back. So that's a very easy way because you don't need anything to, to already start training the thoracic extension. Another thing you can do is again, same stuff. Here, you can actually try to lean towards the, towards the wall on either your arms or better on your elbows. So you can, for example, do something like this. All right, see here? And you just try to push forward with your torso because the wall doesn't allow you to compensate with your arms. So by keeping your arms fixed, you're actually working indirectly on the uh, thoracic spine. So you are actually forcing it to extend, all right? And yeah, so you just do this, you keep this position for, I don't know, uh, 25 seconds, 30 seconds, and then you relax. Then you try to do it again. Now, there are some more active ways to do this more passive, right? There are more active ways to extend the thoracic spine, and that's pretty much working on the low traps and working every exercise is gonna actually extend and open up the chest. So here I have the elastic band. I think I'm gonna show you afterwards an exercise on the, on the floor, but uh, if you have an elastic band, this is the best, all right? Because you can work on this. So this exercise is very, very common, all right? I'm gonna to try to show it to you here. I think, I hope that you can see. Uh, you're gonna just very simply here, fix your lumbar spine. So you don't wanna compensate by doing this, all right? You wanna keep your arms engaged and you don't wanna move here. You're gonna just move upwards, all right? So that's very, very important because otherwise you're not gonna actually working on the thoracic spine, but on the lumbar spine. And that's actually something that you wanna, uh, you don't wanna do in this position. So here, all right, keep your abs engaged. 
like a little bit of closing try to open up the chest and then bring the elastic band as oops uh, <laughs> as high as you can and back so this all right and down and here and down see that my lumbar spine like it's not moving all right this is just uh, doing work with the rear dots these here i'm working my rear dots i'm working the low traps because i, I have my hand I have my arms uh straight in front of my body all right you can do every exercise for example like a face pull uh is it going to be very good so you can train your um uh, your rotator cuff that's always a good thing to train and uh, at the same time you can do this exercise because by doing a face pull like this all right uh, you're actually extending the thoracic spine because you're bringing your arms towards the back right but you're not compensating with the low back so you're not doing this but you're actually by keeping the low back fixed you're actually extending it by just keeping bringing your arms towards the back so an exercise like a face pull it's uh it's very good so here like this remember always to let your wrists win over your elbows so uh, yeah and you can actually do something in between these two exercises that i've showed you so you can actually do a face pull like this all right so you can do a face pull and then from here you can transition it into a hold and that was the exact same hold of the exercise i showed you before so you can combine this exercise so you do a face pull and then you bring your arms up so in that way you're activating the low traps a little bit more uh and yeah all this is going to benefit the thoracic extension and a better posture for this area now it's very important also working on the scapulas and therefore uh, and on the shoulders so rotator calf muscles remember to do exercises for external rotation very important uh, and uh, remember also internal rotation so both internal and external rotation especially if you're doing internal rotation uh, pure internal rotation so you're not using actually uh, big muscles but you're just using the subscapularis that's actually pretty important it's a muscle that you need to stretch and you need to uh, to strengthen as the same as the rotator cuff muscles so remember always to stretch these muscles and to uh, strengthen them uh, and then scapulas as well very important the mid portion of the of the movement so the medial stability of the scapula so low traps middle traps rhomboids uh, in an, an exercise like a face pull already trains these muscles but you can do something more um, more uh, more direct for example by just doing a row here I'm just doing it with elastic band but you can use anything by just doing a row and like you want to shrug your scapulas and you want to like make them touch each other but you don't want to bring your shoulders towards your ears we want to actually have your shoulders back and down so down and you bring your shoulders towards the the back so you can add some resistance here for example from the elastic band like this and you need to shrug right like this this is a very small movement but this is going to train a lot the rhomboids the middle traps and uh well not much the lower trap but already this has showed you before there are some other exercises that you can do for the lower trap so just remember scapulas shoulders external rotation and uh the thoracic extension all these areas you're going to need to work on and uh, in order to counter the effects of all this rounding while sit while sitting and then i'm going to now pause the video and i'm going to actually show you uh, in a different position of the of the room uh the next exercises all right so we should be back here and uh, now i'm going to show you uh, still some exercises for the uh, thoracic spine because you can use the floor in this case you can use gravity or maybe some weights to train the uh the thoracic extension and the thoracic muscles and then we're going to move on to the uh to the lumbar spine and then to the hips hips area so uh what exercises you can do on the floor here where well, it's very simple you can just lay down here all right by having your arms already in front of you so like this already and then from here you can try to lift up your arms so i don't know if you can if you if you can see uh what i'm doing here all right i'm just laying down my arms towards the front like this 
my head is touching the, the ground and I'm just trying to lift up my arms but keeping my elbows straight like this see this is a lot of work for the real dads and for the low traps uh, and it's the same as doing the elastic band exercise it's the same right you can lift up and let go or you can lift up and then hold for example here like this hold 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 and always try to in the ground in this case you can't compensate because uh, well you need to keep on touching with your head the floor so you can't actually like compensating is very hard here so uh yeah i just recommend you to do this exercise if you're on the floor and you can do any variation so for example you can have some weights on your hands if you're gonna uh have more weight more resistance and so you're gonna train them more you can do anything while keeping your arms in the air for example there is this motion right here where you keep your arms in the air and you just move your hands towards the front and towards the back like this And in this way, uh, you can add a little bit more a dynamic movement while keeping the arms always in the air. So uh, you're still training the low traps, the scapulas, the thoracic extension, but in this case, dynamically. Uh, and yeah, those are the two exercises I wanted to show you on the, on the ground for, for the low traps and for the thoracic extension. Um, and then let's move on to the lumbar spine. Now here, is uh, something that's important for you to understand. Uh, every time that we sit, most of the time, we tend to have this position right here on the lumbar spine. We need to have it flexed. So see here that it's like almost rounding, see? And therefore, what happens is that a lot of pressure of the discs between the vertebrae goes towards the back. And that's something that you don't want because that may cause you some neurological compression of the nerves and therefore some pain and therefore we go, you're going to be able to while you sit you're going to be able to have instead extension of the lumbar spine so like this see that now here because i'm in this position my vertebrae are actually pull, pushing the disc towards the front and therefore there is no risk of having any neurological compression so that's why having a support when you're sitting having a support for the lumbar spine is always the best because in that way, even if you want to flex, you can't because there is a support here that is not going to allow you to. So that's the first thing. The second thing, you need to work the low back, you know. Uh, you need to stretch it, okay. So for example, exercises like this one, for example, this, this is the cat uh, and yoga position. So for example, here going into extension, then in going to flexion, extension, this is going to add some motion so it's important to keep moving the area most of that you can actually strengthen these muscles for example with any exercise when you're going to lay down and you want to try to lift up the torso so every time you lift up the torso you're actually training in strengthening the these muscles all right so remember you need to stretch them so for example any exercise where you just uh, here you know do this you are stretching them um, but at the same time, remember, you need to also strengthen them. So uh, you can bring up just your torso, you can bring up your arms. That's what I recommend because these muscles are good when they work together with the glutes. Um, and yeah, just remember not just to stretch these muscles, these low back muscles, but also to strengthen them because the stronger they become, the more you can keep this good posture as you're sitting. And so you can have your discs in a better position and uh, therefore less risk of having lumbar uh, low back pain all right so any exercise on the floor that you know about these muscles are all gonna work and they're all gonna be good uh, and, and yeah that's pretty much this area remember also the core so the transversus abdominis the abs also are gonna contribute to keeping a good posture so remember also to train your abs your transversus abdominis uh, but i've done other videos about that as well now going into the hips area and the glutes this is the most critical thing because when we spend a lot of time sitting we're in this position right 
So we have our hip flexors that are shortened, our glutes that are stretched, and our hamstrings that are shortened. So having the same posture for a long time, every single day, imagine you go to work and you sit down. Then when you are in your home, you're watching a movie, you are sitting down. When you're on a computer, you're sitting down. When you're reading, you're sitting down. When you're eating, you're sitting down. Every, you, we spend more than ten, eight hours every day just sitting. So these muscles here, they become too short. So they lose the ability to be stretched. Glutes, by being always stretched, they actually become very weak and they lose the, the ability to, to contract. And the same happens for the hamstrings. By being always, all the time shortened, they lose the ability to be stretched and they become contracted. So how you can work on these things? Well, very, very easily. You just need to work on every single muscle. You need to do the opposite. So hip flexors, you need to stretch them. So you can just stretch them. For example, this is a very classic hip flexor stretch here, right? So try to place your hand and try to, you can also stretch the quads if you want to, if you take your leg like this and just lean forward and leave here in this case, I'm stretching this right hip flexor and just try to lean forward and to really uh, put as much distance as possible between, between your quad and your yeah, like abdomen, right? And in that way, you're stretching the, the, this hip flexor. Then you do the, the other one, right? Or you can do also this very useful thing. There is another yoga position that is this one, right? When in this case, you are uh, strengthening the low back muscles, but at the same time here, you're stretching the abs and the, uh, also the hip flexors, right? So, um, these stretches, and if you know other stretches for the hip flexors, just do them. They're all good. Uh, just remember that these muscles, they, we spend such a long time with them in a shorter position that somehow we need to counteract these effects by stretching them. But remember, stretching is just uh, not enough because even if these muscles are in the spending a long uh, time shortening it, that doesn't mean that they're strong. They might be contracted. They might they might not be able to be stretched out. But they, that doesn't mean that they're strong. They're actually very weak. So you need to stretch them. But at the same time, you need to strengthen them. So, for example, something very very easy that you can do is just by standing, just bring your leg towards the up and then down so up hold it and then down and then you can change legs hold it and down another thing that you can do is for example you can place your leg on top of something a chair a table right and from here you can actually try to lift up the leg so that you don't touch the the, the surface and you keep it there for i don't know uh, 20 to 30 seconds, you try to hold this. Then you change legs, right? This is gonna allow you to strengthen this muscle other than just stretch it up, and therefore it's gonna be overall better because you're gonna have this muscle that becomes stronger, but at the same time is more flexible because you are also stretching it. So it's a muscle that is stronger and that is more flexible. So that's the best, right? Glutes, now, glutes instead are gonna, we're gonna have a lot of time with them stretched and therefore they become very weak they lose the ability to contract fully right so we need to just strengthen them in this case stretching the glutes is just uh, bad because they're already stretched for a long time so you just need to strengthen them how to strengthen glutes there are a ton of different ways i'm going to just show you here some so if you don't have anything this is just the best you can do so a glute bridge in this case you're going to have your knees flex so that you take away work from the uh, from the hamstrings, right? And you wanna just squeeze and train with your glutes. So you don't wanna use your hamstrings. And also you don't wanna use your low back. So you don't wanna do this, right? If you do this every time you do glute bridges, so your hips get very, very close and very high, that means that you're using mostly your low back, right? So instead you should be focused on keeping your abs engaged and just pushing with your glutes. You can see that here, this is the maximum I can reach. See that it's not much, and it's not here, but it's here. 
and uh, and that's because I'm not using my low back so remember to do that difference so if you're gonna train your low back you can also do glutes like this all right because this is gonna train also your low back but if you're gonna train just your glutes you need to engage your abs and you need to only work with the glutes right uh, you can do this with both legs you can do one leg so for example you can do this it's the same in this case I'm just using one glute at a time um, any exercise that is gonna place you in a hip hinge on, and from there you're gonna need to uh, to extend is gonna train your glutes so for example doing uh, squats anything with uh, uh, um, with a very like I don't know how to say it but for example here if you do this for example this split uh, leg squat but you're leaning a lot forward you're hinging a lot more your hips and therefore you're loading also more the glutes but uh, but yeah there are a ton of different exercises for the glutes I'm not gonna cover all of them and yeah, just remember to train them to strengthen them it's very very important these are the muscles that are the biggest muscles in our body but at the same time they are the weakest ones so really strengthen them not just the great glute but also the other medial and the uh, small glute uh, they're all going to be important for other functions in this case sitting is not going to affect these other glutes the the medial and the the medius and the small but at the same time you're going to also strengthen them you know all together uh, and then finally hamstrings now hamstrings is the same as it was for the hip flexors so you want to mostly stretch them but at the same time you want to strengthen them because they are shown in it but at the same time they're weak so you want to for example this position right here is one of the most common stretches for the hamstrings where you really want to like have your hips here until it tilted so you don't want to sit back right because like for example doing this for your hamstrings is doing nothing because see here how my low back is backwards like my hips here are all rotated so this is useless right you want to keep your hips instead forward like this so you want to keep a lumbar extension as you try to stretch your hamstrings right so that's why for example a stretch like this one is a lot more useful because here you can control how much you hinge with your hips and therefore you can stretch them a lot more and at the same time remember to strengthen them so an exercise for example like this one here right like this one leg all right this is going to train your hamstrings isometrically and you can do the, mo the motion for example this when you when you are keeping your hips in the air you're just moving your uh, uh, your heels right you're you're just uh, how it's called you're sliding with your heels on top of something towards the back front and backwards like that um, you can do all the all these very useful exercises for example this one right here when you're just uh, training the hamstrings eccentrically like this one uh, you can also do the, the this one right here when you're training the hamstrings as you're sliding backwards right uh, this is very very nice because uh, the other leg actually prevents your hips from tilting backwards and therefore um, this is a very very nice uh, exercise um, and yeah there are many many more the nordic curls so when someone if you can hook your heels or someone is taking your heels you can just do this and you can try to lower yourself eccentrically again using your hamstrings um, and yeah just uh, a ton of different exercises so remember stretch but also strengthen instead for the glutes is mostly just strengthening uh, and yeah, so that was my postural routine. I know it's very long, but I wanted to explain to you guys every single exercises and uh, so that you can do them correctly. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so hope you enjoy. See ya. Bye bye.